the other thing is that's concerning to me is that anyone who's shutting down questions is a problem. You know, you, you yeah. I, I don't understand why you can't ask about what's going on. There's concerns about myocarditis in, in young Huge. boys getting the yeah. shot. So why, why can't you ask, hey, what is the risk benefit of this? You know, you have half the country, half of the kid student kid population in this country has already had COVID. Why? Why aren't you testing people to see if they have natural immunity and exempting them? Mm. I mean, why? This does not make sense. I remember when I was pregnant. And I went in and they, my doctor at the time, my OBGYN tested me for antibodies to measles, mumps, chicken pox, because there are risks they feel are associated with getting these illnesses while pregnant. She tested me, came back. Oh, you have antibodies. You're fine. She didn't say, oh, you have antibodies. Let's give you the shot. It doesn't make sense. You know, so some of this, I would really just say to people, what makes sense and what doesn't? And you can be you know, pro vaccine in the sense of maybe you vaccinate your children for certain things. Maybe you strongly believe that the vaccine prevents severity of illness and you've chosen to get it yourself. I'm fine with that. I want you to make those choices for yourself, but I also don't want you to prevent anyone from asking questions about why things are being forced on people. Either you lose your job or you get vaccinated for something where clinical trials don't even exist on certain groups of people. This isn't, this doesn't make sense. Yeah. So, you know, my message is one of freedom and it's one of health and one of prioritizing people's, you know, individual conditions and individual rights, whatever that looks like. I don't care really, truly. I'm not someone who pulls, you know, French fries from McDonald's out of people's mouths or I don't, you, I don't pull sick. I'm not advocating. You can't do what you want. You know, I'm really libertarian at heart, live the life you want and that you choose. Just don't try to control mine um, is the message. And that's, profoundly American. That's what this whole country is about. It's just getting lost. And, and I think, you know, Casper, one important point I think here to make is that one of the reasons it's getting lost is because people are terrified. They're terrified. Fear is a very powerful weapon. And I know because I bought into it at first, mm -hmm. I was very scared. I had a four month old baby. There was this pandemic. I had some distrust of my own body because of the Lyme disease. I was like, am I going to be able to handle this? I had a lot of emotional baggage that was going on at that time. And I was in the news and I was reading headlines and I was getting more and more stressed out every day. And it really took me quite some time. I mean, I worked from home for a long time because I was worried, oh my gosh, I know I supposedly have natural immunity, but there aren't enough stats on it right now. So could I give it to my elderly parents who were around? And I was taking care of my mom who had you know, back trouble at the time. I really truthfully stayed in that space way too long. So I own that. And I, I, I really feel very badly about that because I know better, but fear is a powerful weapon. So Ultimately, you have to get out of that and just be able to look. And when I realized that schools weren't opening, when they could safely reopen, and when I realized that these mitigation tactics weren't like I, I worked through six flu, flu seasons in schools. I was a former teacher. We never masked kids. These were not discussions that were happening. We know that the flu is at least as dangerous, if not more so to children as COVID-19, different for adults, but for children. And I just started to see this. This doesn't this isn't adding up. Um, the mandates really pushed me over the edge, but be careful with that fear because you can get into that place and suddenly you'll be willing to do anything. And I think a lot of people are still scared and they're saying things like, well, I'm vaccinated, but I need you to be vaccinated in order to protect me. What? Take a minute. I know yeah. it's scary. Take it, sit back and just understand that that doesn't make sense because if you are protected, you're not worried about me. So are you doubting your own protection? What is going on? Like what is actually happening is all I'm really calling for some common sense. Um, but fear was a big part of it for me, for sure. Yeah. And if I could add on to that, because we see that a lot at the center where you have a patient come in that has been diagnosed, went through the conventional realm, not gotten better, basically told they're out of options and yeah. they come here, right? In a last chance kind of place. And <laughs> so and they start getting better and they start being like, wow, I'm feeling hopeful now. The fears kind of subsided. I'm yeah. seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And then they go to that general practitioner or that last doctor to get a checkup or to show them, hey, look, I'm doing better. And the doctor says, oh, you're doing better, but we still see this and this. And we think you should do this surgery now that you're a candidate, that you're a little better. And then they say, well, I'm feeling better. But they say you could you know, regress and they start to instill fear. 
And they start to say, well, there's a 30% mm-hmm. chance that you get cancer now. There's a 50% chance you end up like this. Mm-hmm. And then you see a person that was rationally getting better, feeling good at the clinic, yes. stop suddenly and say, no, I'm going for surgery. We say, well, you know, it's your choice. We can't stop you from going from surgery. Of course, that is your choice, right? But I think right. you made it out of fear. And I think it's not exactly the best choice for you. They go in, they get worse. They come back worse than ever to us and say, can you help me? And then it's really hard. Then you already right. have organs that have been, you know, you're on some experimental drug or something that really is wreaking havoc. And you see what fear does. And this is something that's common, unfortunately. Fear is, is such yeah. an impactful emotion. And you should never make decisions when you're in a fearful state, truly. No. And I wrote about that in the book because I saw what was happening to me. And I saw the big, there was a big contrast actually in my house because, you know, my husband, Jeremy, like the ceiling could be falling in, like the house is on fire. And he's like, oh, let me just get my shoes. You know, we'll figure something out. Like he really, I mean, we got COVID. I was having complete and total meltdowns, throwing myself on the floor. I mean, it was Oscar worthy (laughs) performances. And he was just walking around eating ice pops. He was like, oh. Is there a blue? Is there That's a superpower. Yeah. <laughs> and he was fine. He got better faster. He was, you know, and, and that absolutely played a role. And he was also, you know, the first one to be talking about, hmm, I don't know if cloth masks from Etsy are really blocking a corona. Like, I don't know. You know, he and I was real, I was much later to all of this because I, and I think some of it truly was that I was a new mom. I had never had someone else to worry about. And I was consumed with Hartley. I was like, you know, had I not had a baby at that point, I think I would have maybe felt it. But I was like, I need to protect this little person. He has Mm -hmm. a vulnerable immune system. You know, what do I need to do? Did I sign off? I'm just going back in. Um, What do I need to do to protect him? And um, that kind of took over. 